So, I mean, back in those days then, so here you are, um, w when you guys are together, did you have roles within the group? Like for yourself, did you have a role um, that you, that was yours um, it, within, within the group? You know, absolutely. Well, roles changed, or I'll say evolved. Like the hats that I've worn the most, I'll say. When we first got together as As Yet Untitled, Claude was the arranger who brought songs in. And then I became an arranger who added notes that were missing. And then as I got more experienced, I would bring in songs that I was working on. And, you know, it got really um, fun because everyone had great ideas. So then as far as the, the business side of things, I, I was actually the CFO slash uh, treasurer for the As Yet Inc. portion of things when we were a corporation. Um, I was usually the, the mouthpiece, the speaker for um, the liaison between the group and the management a lot of times because um, for whatever reason, whenever there was bad news, I'm the one that had to go and deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think, uh, you know, when the group got signed, in addition to being, well, Claude wasn't in the group anymore. So then I became the only arranger, okay. which brings me to a point that I wanted to clear up for the listeners, for the five people who care. I watched the interview with As Yet, and um, I would like to, for the record, state that Sean Rivera, I alone, arranged and produced the acapella version of Hard to Say I'm Sorry for the As Yet record. Anyone who has the physical CD can read where it says, produced by Babyface and David Foster. And then you look, you scroll down and it says, co-produced by Sean Rivera, arranged by Sean Rivera. They were not there. I did it on a... Uh, Porta Studio, I overdubbed all the parts from top to bottom, brought to Babyface's house, and we have witnesses. Daryl Simmons was there, John B. was there. They loved the arrangement. They said, you know what, we're going to record this for the album. I taught it to the group, and we came in and sang it live and recorded it within about a couple of hours. I don't know why they went online to say we did it when we wasn't there. And the sad part to me is that the group is so talented, they didn't need to take credit for my work, and there are interviews that they've done before where I, they used to give me credit where credit is due. Just like I sat here and told you how many things I learned from Claude Thomas about arranging, the least I expected was for them to say, thank you, Sean, for giving us this wonderful arrangement that you came up with from scratch and put your heart and soul into when no one asked you to and no one paid you to. But no, you know, I wish them the best. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, and, it, and, it's, and I think sometimes when... Um, I do, I've done interviews where members left the group or the group is talking. I don't see so that, you know, we, they don't, we don't go into the details as to who left or why they left. So they tend to, um, so this is just experience from other groups, they tend to, I don't know, for any reason, not bring in the names of people who have left. Now, I understand that. I understand yeah. that, right? From the standpoint of you not, okay. I choose not to mention people if it's going to put them in a negative light, yeah. because I don't want to hurt their livelihood or their families. Yeah. But I don't see what harm it causes the group to thank me, just like they would thank Brian McKnight for Arrow Through My Heart, or David Foster for uh, Hard to Say I'm Sorry. I don't see why they can't just say, hey, Sean came up with a great idea and we wish him luck. We wish him the best, mm. just like I'm wishing them the best. At that part, I'll never understand. I don't take it personal. I'm just, I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm just, I was shocked when I saw that. Wow. I was just like, wow, they can't even, none of them, nobody in that room who said we was there. None of them. So there's not even a way to spin that to make it seem like, well, it was the royal we. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, so, well, 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 not your fault. <laughs> yeah, no, I think people would wonder that uh, we, you've told us how you got onto Viva Mass, uh, where you are now, but a bit wondering why leave as yet because there there seemed to have been different people coming and going but the group still continued as of today how did your uh, sort of oh, right. you? now i'm going to tell you the, the truth of what i've never shared this publicly 
because no one's ever asked. And the thing is, right, back in 2014, I was engaged to my now ex-wife and she's Malaysian. And the group was, we had just finished, uh, we did a song for this, well, my ex-wife was an artist. Mm -hmm. And man, I can't believe I'm, well, yeah, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down. So one of the guys in the group, his wife was, his wife was Malaysian. And she had brought in this connection with a label in Malaysia to record a song with one of their artists for a movie soundtrack. And maybe you've seen it, it's Magical Moment. It's a song for like an animated kind of Pixar type of movie. It's got Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings and Steve Curry and you know, it's got some named people on it. And the, basically the owner of the label used to be in a, a popular singing group in Malaysia. And he found out that the, uh, Dion's wife uh, owned this Malaysian restaurant that he was eating at and they started talking. I was like, oh, your husband's in Ajit. I love Ajit. You know what? Um, I want to record. Uh, I would love, maybe they would want to be on the song, you know, with one of my artists. So basically a script of the movie was sent over and some tracks were shared. And again, I thought, let's all get together and shoot some ideas around and see what we can come up with. But instead, a couple of members decided to step off to the side, write and record and send stuff in without involving everyone else. Hmm. And after a few failed attempts, the whole deal was about to fall apart. Then these same people came back and said, hey man, you know what? I don't know, these guys ain't that serious, man. What do you think? You see what you can come up with. I wrote the thing in 10 minutes, the whole thing, 10 minutes. I don't know why, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm all that great, but when you're inspired for whatever reason, yeah. I put the demo down, I, I, I read the script and I was inspired. And I thought, wouldn't this be great to write some lyrics that had like a double meaning because the song was about like the princess and the frog, but it's a male frog that wants to kiss a female prince to become a real man. So I was like, hmm. You know, in that magical moment, when your lips kiss mine, you will finally know the truth. But, you know, that truth could be like anything. It doesn't have to be that you're going to turn into a frog. You know what I mean? So we got the, the gig. They sent the contracts over. And, you know, I was kind of like, mm, you know, let's go back and forth a little bit because there's, we need to make sure this is right. They negotiated, we negotiated. We didn't have uh, a lawyer, but I was always the point person because we already had a rider, a standard kind of thing. You know, we've been in the game, you know, long enough to know. Mm. So we signed the deal, we get out there. I fall in love like instantly with um, my now ex-wife, but we have two kids together, beautiful children. And, um, you know, that whole experience was kind of like, I felt like, hmm, it's a shame that like, you know, we couldn't have done this together, all together. And like, they basically tried to cut me out of the situation. And then I wound up saving the situation. Um, then I wound up marrying this woman and moving to Malaysia. Oh. Now, before I left, before I left, I never said, you know what? I'm leaving the group. We weren't doing much. We only got calls once or twice a year, maybe four times in a year to do like some old school R&B thing or, and, you know, this is 2014, 2015, there was such thing as remote recording and like, it's a 19 hour flight, but like, if you're going to pay us, you know, $30,000 a gig or whatever, you don't think I'll fly out? I mean, it's not that expensive. I'll pay for my own flight. What do you do? I flew back and forth a lot. So um, what happened? This is the point when I left and this is crazy to me, but this is what happened. Um, Mark Nelson came back to offer a deal to uh, the group that he had brought in. He masterminded this deal um, with a label who didn't necessarily have experience in R&B, but you know, they were kind of a catalog label and they had a few interesting artists. They offered us to re-record uh, last night um, 
without Babyface uh, and basically do an album. But the numbers, the way that the deal was structured, we would wind up owing the label money mm. if we didn't come in under budget. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right to me. So they're going to give us not even, we'll say a month's rent up front for a year's worth of work. And then we owe them money. And that's the first draft. So I said, you know what? Um, I can't. We're better than this. Not I'm better. We're better than this. But, you know, a few of the other guys were like, you know what? Um, we don't have anything else going on. I said, speak for yourself. I can't. I can't do it. But call me whenever, you know, like I'll do anything else. Or if, if there's any shows coming up or whatever, I'm not going to leave you hanging. You know, I didn't think that I was leaving the group. I just refused to sign that deal. And if they wanted to sign, I couldn't physically stop them from signing it because no one person owned the rights. We, as a collective, owned the trademark to the name. Okay. So then I come to find out that the group re-registered the trademark without my name on it. When I started it from the beginning with the group, from 89 till now, when the original trademark was registered, it was me, Dion, Kenny, uh, well, Claude wasn't in the group at the time, but make a long story short, other names have come and gone, but every version of the trademark had my name. So how would it look if Mark Zuckerberg came back to a group as an, I'm sorry, came back to Facebook as an employee? Like they just take you off the board, but you can come get a salary. I'm not going to be an employee of a company that I started. But that was the, the if there were ever to be a reunion, that would be uh, the deal breaker for me. I was like, wait, so I had to find out after the fact that they had taken my name off and didn't tell me that I wasn't even on a trademark. And then the royalties that were coming in through Sound Exchange uh, wound up going to them. They took my name off. I had to go back to Sound Exchange and send them a copy of the album saying, look, my name is still on the album. Just because they have the rights to as yet doesn't mean they have the rights to Sean Rivera's performance royalties in the group. That's two separate things. And Sound Exchange agreed with me and withheld their royalties uh, until I was paid back. Wow. So there's the truth. So is it because you just elected not to uh, sign the contract that they thought you not? You're going to be a stumbling block, or is it because you moved to Malaysia? What What do you think ultimately? You know what? The I think it was a, a series of things. Maybe they just didn't like me. I don't know. I can't speak for them. And all I know is that I tried my best to do what was best for everyone. Now, I'm not perfect. I may have said something sarcastically to hurt their feelings or maybe you know maybe they just don't they just don't like being told the truth all i know is for everyone watching this right go out and watch the kleptomaniac video it'll tell you everything you need to know you watch the kleptomaniac video and then afterwards you know it'd be nice you watch viva mas overjoyed just watch them back to back and you can tell that we've decided to go in different directions and that's where it is. Mm.